All right, what is up, YouTube? ODSC General back again, re-recording this video really quick because, well, I accidentally forgot to unmute my mic. Embarrassing, but uh, hey. Anyways, guys, uh, we have Firefighting Simulator The Squad now because the name has changed, and uh, it has been announced with a release date, a, a teaser trailer, and all sorts of other stuff, so pretty cool stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the trailer here. I'll give you guys my thoughts and everything. We'll try and break it down a little bit here as well as some of the other news. So uh, right off bat, we've got a new truck here, which is a another Rosenbauer. The game's gonna release with four Rosenbauer trucks. Uh, this one is of course a, a snorkel truck. The other one we know is the ladder truck and then the, uh, the standard like pumper and stuff that we've seen previously. Um, now we've got this warehouse fire and it looks like there's a little bit of a chemical spill or something there either gas or some other chemical that's on the ground there maybe oil uh it's kind of unclear but that seems to be burning specifically there so i'm not sure if those are going to spread or anything that's going to be something you have to necessarily worry about uh but kind of an interesting little thing there uh then you got a pretty major structure fire here so the game's going to have 30 different calls, and you can see they're just mostly showing off the two calls for this 30-second teaser trailer, guys. Now, I was pretty excited when I first saw this, because I thought maybe we would see, like, dynamic damage to the buildings. Because you can see the the, the front part of this building is, like, falling away, and uh, there's sections of the roof missing, and this is kind of broken away uniquely from this, and here it's uh, broken away uniquely, too. So I was thinking maybe we'd see unique damage, but uh, having looked at the screenshots, there's screenshots of the same call at night, and the damage is exactly the same to the front of the house as it is uh, in this video. So I'm guessing that's probably not going to be dynamic building damage to like the exteriors and stuff, unfortunately, which I think would really make this game last a lot longer. With only 30 calls, I don't know how much replayability there's going to be in this. I mean, it could be pretty decent since it is four-player co-op. Uh, and it looks like a little bit more casual of a title. I was kind of thinking this might come out to uh, to console. I talked about this in my original video covering the game years back, back in 2016. Uh, the game back then was supposed to have modding support. I don't know if that's changed at all. Uh, if it still is going to have modding support, my stance really hasn't changed on it too much, which is we probably won't see a console release. A little bit more likely than it was back then in 2016, but still not uh, still not super duper likely. So... With that, let's go ahead and take a look at the Steam page here. So you can see planned release date of November 17th. So that is 13 days from now. Uh, good lucky number, right? Of course, this game has been delayed many times. With an initial release date of 2017, this game's been delayed for literal years. So uh, kind of like a Cyberpunk 2077 thing, but even worse. Uh, so let's read these uh, this new little section here. This was, I think, added along with the uh, the update here. So Firefighting Simulator lets you experience what it means to fight fires up close as an active part of a major U.S. city's firefighting team. Discover over 30 diverse deployment locations and complete exciting missions that span 15,000 acre large townscape inspired by North America and West Coast. So the townscaping, you know, of course, we've seen this stuff before, but it looks like a pretty good uh, townscape if uh, the 2016 video was any indication. I can only imagine it's improved since then. Uh, I would hope so and everything anyways. And uh, it doesn't necessarily look like a realistic town, which is a big problem with a lot of these games. You know, flashing lights is kind of the same. It just doesn't feel real. Uh, flashing lights has kind of improved a little bit with that, with its new city that's rolling out. But... Uh, yeah, anyways, let's keep reading on here. Operate faithfully reproduced Rosenbauer America fire trucks. Extinguish fires and rescue civilians in need. Uh, so there is going to be civilian rescue and stuff. We saw that the 2016 uh, video that I covered on the game, uh, which it looks like you won't need to worry about doing advanced things like resuscitation and things like that. There's going to be extraction points for you to take civilians to, and there's going to be like medics and stuff, which we'll look through some of the other pictures to take a look at that. Uh, together with up to three friends in co-op, multiplayer, or with the help of AI team members in the single-player mode. So, four players uh, total at all times. Even if you're playing by yourself, you get an AI squad of three other guys to go with you. Otherwise, you can play multiplayer with, yeah, I guess, friends. I don't know if there's going to be, like, open matchmaking and stuff so that you can just hop in with a random group of guys. I'm kind of hoping that's a thing, but I don't know. They don't specify that. They specify friends. Uh, also at your disposal is authentic firefighting gear such as helmets, firefighter boots, and a breathing apparatus uh, modeled by well-known North American firefighting equipment manufacturers. 
Uh, fire alert incoming. What are you waiting for? Every minute counts. Pull on your boots, start the engine of your truck, turn on the lights and siren, and take the shortest route to the deployment act or location to fight the fire and save lives. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about some of the features, which is, you know, stuff we kind of talked about with the video, but I'm going to just kind of go over this again. So the multiplayer co-op mode allows you to play in a team with up to three friends and save lives and, of course, fight fires with your team. You are free to assume whichever role that you uh, suits you most. Now, I don't know if there's going to be actual role assignments or if it's just going to be, you know, like emerging YC and stuff where it's grab a hose and go to town. Uh, in single player mode, you will experience up close what it means to fight fires in a major U.S. city, which, you know, once again, I basically talked about this, but this is the more interesting part. Thanks to the intuitive command UI, you take control of assigning tasks to your AI colleagues and jump right into the thick of the action yourself. Advanced fire simulation includes water, smoke, heat, backdrafts, flashovers, grease fires, and a wide range of other causes of fire, such as electronics, chemicals, and explosions. Now, this is kind of interesting, potentially, because this is something we really don't see in any of the other firefighting games is, uh, I know Into the Flames has at least simulation of, like, different burn rates, and Emerge NYC might as well. It's not necessarily apparent if they do, and I don't know if it would be apparent in this, whether or not it does, but the, the backdrafts and the flashovers kind of get me as interesting, because I don't think uh, Emerge NYC or Into the Flames actually has either of these, or if they do, I've never really noticed them happen before. Uh, so this could be a really cool and interesting effect that's going to change how you approach fires and everything, make you actually have to approach them a little bit smarter with regards to the game. Uh, same thing with these, you know, these grease fires and stuff too, is, you know, you're going to have to use different uh, tools and stuff to actually uh, extinguish those grease fires once you get to those points. Uh, then it goes on, a complex uh, physics system ensures the realistic representation of destruction caused by dynamically spreading fire. So like I said, there was the exterior damage to the house, and it could be that the, the nighttime screenshots, you know, they, they had the building burn up somewhat and then put god mode on the building so they could just take screenshots at night of the building or just change the game tonight at the, you know, like right after they basically recorded the clip for the video. I don't know, so maybe we'll see exterior building damage. I'm hoping for something like that because that would be amazing because no other game's done that uh, to this point. Uh, with that being said, I'm not really holding my breath for it because it just no other game's done it to this point, and the fact is is that, well, that doesn't mean they can't do it. Uh, I wouldn't expect that sort of intuitiveness from a larger uh, simulator company at this point. They just, you know, they, they make decent games, but they're not really intuitive. They don't, or not necessarily intuitive, but they're not really, uh, they don't really take risks with them. They don't do anything really interesting. They basically take the safe course, which is why the firefighting genre was kind of so stagnant for so long is because it was reliant on these big simulator companies and they just didn't really do anything exciting with them. Uh, and that goes on, uh, drive five, oh, so it's actually five licensed uh, Rosenbauer American trucks. I was thinking it was only four, but we've got the TP3 pumper, the T-Rex hydraulic uh, platform, through a uh, large US city and then they say cockpit view. So there is an interior view of the engines as well as uh, third person view. Do you use authentic equipment by well-known US firefighting industry brands such as Cairns, uh, MSA, G1, SCBA, and Hakes? I don't know if that's how that's pronounced, but uh, whatever. I don't actually, I, don't know, I can't remember if they made any of the equipment I used. I feel like maybe they did gloves, but I looked them up and they make boots. So I don't, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, great replay value thanks to 30 different deployment locations, uh, each offering several ways to beat the fires both day and night. So a little bit concerned about this. 30 sounds like a lot to them apparently, but 30 does not sound like a lot to me. Uh, I mean, there's games that have come out with significantly less locations to do stuff at, so maybe it will still be pretty interesting, but... Uh, you know, these 30 calls go out pretty quick and stuff. I'm not sure how long it's going to take to fight a single fire in this, if a single fire is going to be like a gameplay session in this, or if, uh, if you're going to be looking at knocking out, you know, five or six different calls in an average play session of like, you know, maybe an hour or two of playing, you're going to be knocking out six calls. That 30 is not going to last very long, is it? So that's kind of a point of concern for me, potentially. And, you know, maybe it won't be a big issue, uh, especially depending on how the fire spreads, I think is going to be the big thing that uh, maybe makes that kind of interesting is if the fire's starting at uh, different lo different parts of this, because it says different deployment locations, but it doesn't necessarily 30 different calls. 
So you might see the fire starting in different parts of the house randomly. That can make it really interesting too. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see on that one, unfortunately, because that information is just not available here. Uh, comprehensive tutorial, radio communications, and character recordings in English, as well as subtitles in several languages, and faithfully recreated engine sounds for an even denser atmosphere. Uh, which is kind of cool. I mean, you know, tutorial is always welcome. It opens up to more casual players, which means a bigger population, which is always a good thing. Uh, radio communications, not sure what uh, what this means. I don't know if that's going to be like the dispatcher or, or what, or if there's going to be like in-game uh, fire, you know, fire ground radio stuff that we're going to be able to use. Uh, a detailed 15K acres large U.S. city with different districts, such as an industrial area, suburbs, and downtown. Supports standard steering wheels and game pads. And then this talks about the uh, tutorial again because I feel like they forgot they had it up here. Anyways, you know, honestly, if this game had come out back in 2017 when it was originally supposed to, if it came out like this and looked, you know, and they had this list of stuff, this game would have been amazing back in 2017. But we're not in 2017 anymore. We're in 2020, and we've had Emergent NYC around for years, and it's developed up majorly since 2017. Uh, you know, we now have Into the Flames, which just came out this past year, and they've rapidly developed up their game, and uh, both of them are going to be major, major competitors to this, and especially with them being longer established and everything. I don't know that this game is really going to have an opportunity for it to take off. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people like myself who are, uh, you know, big firefighting fans that uh, they're going to check this out just to see if the firefighting in this is a little bit more realistic and a little bit more uh, easily accessible, I suppose, in a, in a sense, than Into the Flames or Flashing Lights. I mean, they're, they're both not too bad now, but it, it can take a little while, especially with, uh, I said Flashing Lights, Into the Flames or Emerge NYC. I hope I could. I, I probably said flashing lights so many times. I, I, if I said flashing lights a bunch of times, I meant to say Emerge NYC because I feel like I maybe have. But anyways, yeah, like, you know, the thing with Emerge NYC is it can take a little while for you to get set up on a fire and everything, get everything laid down. So I don't know if that's going to be the case or not here. It looks like this is going to be pretty straightforward as far as setting up supply lines and stuff, basically kind of similar to End of the Flames, which is set up your supply line, grab your hose and go type of deal. But uh, it, it's going to be a lot tougher for this game to, to survive and take off. Let's look at some of these screenshots, though. Take a look, see what's in here, see if we can kind of take away anything unique from this. Uh, obviously, the biggest thing in here is they seem to be uh, prying open this door with... Uh, I, I can't tell if that's supposed to be a halligan or if that's just like a crowbar. Because it, it looks kind of like a crowbar a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it looks like uh, forced entry is going to be a thing, so you'll have to sometimes force, you know, doors and stuff to get into the house, which is, you know, just kind of standard 101 uh, firefighting game mechanic there. And then here you get another view of that house destruction, which, like I said, this is exactly the same as in the video. You see this exact same window still intact here, uh, and the debris pattern here and everything is exactly the same. So, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see dynamic damage to the exterior of the house, which is a... a Big shame, unfortunately. That could have been a very, very awesome and uh, distinguishing feature for the game. But uh, it is what it is, even if it's not in. Uh, then we come in, and that's uh, that's very clearly a, a Halligan there that he's got in his hand. And uh, you can see them carrying a, a person in the background there. His helmet uh, seems to be gone, it looks like. That's, uh, that's kind of interesting, but kind of a cool screenshot nonetheless. And, uh, yeah, not much else to take away from it. Looks like visibility might be kind of bad, but I feel like that's just because they're panned up close on these guys with, like, the bright fire in the background. Uh, then we go up, and we get another shot of that house. Once again, same thing. You know, we're back in daytime, and you can see destruction of the house is exactly the same. And uh, then you've got an interior view of one of the, uh, the apparatus, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm not sure which one this is supposed to be. But uh, yeah, pretty cool nonetheless. And uh, you can you can see you've also got some AI standing around. So you got uh, AI police vehicles, uh, and an AI cop and AI ambulance and stuff. So what I find a little concerning about this is that in past videos, when they were first showing off the game, you had this open world and you had to like drive out and respond to the fires. And they do say that here, but uh, 
I'm guessing that once you're on scene, the game's going to auto set up your your apparatus into certain locations, probably. Um, at least that's my concern because you got this police vehicle here with the road blocked off, and then you've got an engine facing this way. Uh, you know, the other way on the road. So unless this is like an AI engine too, which seems unlikely. You know, they, I feel like the game had to have either spawned this stuff in after you got there. And in order to safely do that, they basically need to say where your apparatus is going to be. So I feel like there's going to be pre-assigned positions for the apparatus. Uh, you can see with the ambulance, because like the ambulance is kind of here in between. So that's kind of a, a concerning point for me too. Then we've got another interior fire. The hose physics look amazing though i love the the hose that's probably like the best part of this game for me so far is the hose just looks fantastic uh you know it, it's not completely you know like spaghetti where it's just completely limp and everything just all over the place it, it looks solid it looks like it probably took some effort for him to drag the hose in there even though i'm sure it actually didn't it looks like it could have um kind of a big light switch there too not really a big deal, but just kind of an interesting thing. Uh, yeah, pretty intense looking. You see a lot of uh, burn textures on the floor and stuff here. But once again, you know, the furniture and everything seems pretty well intact. So that's kind of concerning. Is they're, they're talking about this dynamic damage. And I feel like that's just this texture that gets applied anywhere the fire was, you know, has been. That's been done a million times before. Uh, Into the Flames and has it, uh, I do believe, and I'm pretty sure Flashing Lights has that too, at least to some extent. So, kind of uh, meh, not uh, not too excited for that. I think I maybe Emerging NYC doesn't. I'm not sure. I, and I said Flashing Lights again. I can't keep doing that. I don't know why because those two games are so different. Uh, then we're back in the warehouse fire, and you guys can once again see you know a couple guys fighting the fire while somebody's rescuing civilians. Then uh, the exterior of that house again. So once again, same exact damage pattern as in the video. Uh, you can see here from this angle, you got a couple medics waiting with a uh, stretcher down there on the road. So I'm guessing that how this is going to work is this fire in particular will have a injured civilian you'll have to carry out and uh, or civilians plural potentially, and you'll have to carry out and bring them to these medics, and you'll get probably points and everything based off of that too. And it looks like there might have been a a cop or something there. Now. This is actually kind of interesting here. Um, you've got firefighters over here operating these apparatus, and then you've got these guys here. So we know this is only four players in total, and you've got one, two, three firefighters on, on screen right here. And you've got another two here and another guy here. So you've got six guys on screen for four-player co-op games. So there's definitely going to be AI firefighters in here, but it looks like a lot of them are just, you know, they're just going to be standing around, unfortunately, uh, just like these uh, these cops and these medics and stuff like that. So I'm not sure if that's going to help or, you know, make or break the game. Once again, adding my concern about the, uh, the apparatus being driven to the scene and how they're set up and everything. Uh, you've got this engine here, this truck, I should say, and it's blocking the road with a, uh, a police, you know, no, you know, no crossing or caution sign or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, or tape, I should say. And then you've got this, you know, ladder and everything rigged up. I'm assuming that this is all AI controlled for these two apparatus here. So that's, uh, that's not really great. That's, uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of questionable. Once again, this could have all been set up by, uh, by the developer. It could just be that one particular fire, but kind of a big red flag to me that like when you get to a scene, the game's just gonna like lock you into location, kind of like it does with uh, Nostrof One One Twelve. Uh, you basically have to park in the exact spot it tells you to, and then everybody rolls in behind you. You have to wait until everybody's done. Uh, except for I feel like it's probably just gonna go to like a black screen, and then you're gonna like kind of like come out of the black screen, and it's gonna be like start the fire or whatever, you know, start extinguishing the fire, and. Uh, Everything is going to be in place at that point. Everybody else will have arrived, and they're going to be all around you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're going to have to wait and see on this one. Uh, graphically speaking, it looks good. Uh, based off of past gameplay trailers, it looks pretty good. 
However, with uh, with stiffer competition, more so than ever now, I don't have a lot of faith in this game being a uh, popular product at this point. I think they waited way too long to push this game out. And well, I'm happy that they uh, tried to make it the best game as possible. You know, make it playable and bug free and everything. I just don't know that there's enough here to uh, to beat out on other games. Performance, I think, is going to be the ultimate deciding factor, if anything. Uh, Emerge NYC and even Into the Flames, although it's improved significantly, have uh, both proven to be difficult for a lot of people to play on, especially older computers. So if this can play on an older computer and stuff and uh, a lot smoother than those titles, which is much more likely from a professional developer, uh, because they have a lot of tricks with like LODs and stuff like that to, to help game improvement and performance. That's going to be the big deciding factor. But if, aside from that, you know, just based off gameplay mechanics and locations and stuff like that, I don't know that this game offers enough to be competitive against the indie scene. The indie scenes, just like I said, they're more willing to push the limits on what makes a good firefighting game. Uh, you know, they're, they're enthusiasts just like ourselves. And, you know, I've, I've had my stuff to say about Raph, but, you know, he's, uh, he's just about, you know, he's probably even more excited about firefighting than I am at this point. Uh, you know, and, uh, the same is true of, uh, Corey with, uh, with Into the Flames. He himself is a firefighter and, you know, he, he's an enthusiast just like the rest of us too about it. And, you know, with these big game development firms, you know, not everybody working on these is going to be enthusiasts. I mean, somebody obviously in the chain thought, Hey, this is a great idea. And, you know, enough people agreed to make it a game, but, uh, you know, the, the same love and care doesn't get put in in those situations i feel like and, and sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes that's a bad thing but i think in more cases than not it's it's a good thing from the perspective of these indie developers who are passionate fans of firefighting who are putting in all these uh, you know unique mechanics that none of these other like on rails games have done and made it feel actually meaningful to have things like a halligan to have to force entry and stuff and it, and it takes a while and you have to break out windows and the ceilings will break and stuff like that uh yeah anyways guys i'm going on a tangent and i could talk about this for a while this video ended up being much longer than the first almost twice as long off of a 30 second video uh yeah when the when the actual game comes out though on the 17th guys you can be sure i will have the game uh, I don't know what day the 17th is, so I don't know if we can expect that's a Tuesday. So probably won't expect a video for the game that day, but maybe on the 18th, day, hopefully we'll have a video. I'll do a quick video on it, talking about the game and everything, so you guys can look forward to that. Uh, all right, guys, take it easy. I'll uh, see you in the next one.